We get asked all the time, is solar even worth it for my home? Today, we're gonna to be looking at a few different use cases from retired couples, young families, so you can work out if solar panels and battery storage is worth it for you. Let's go. So a really common scenario we find ourselves in is a couple that are just coming up to their retirement and they're thinking, I need to batten down the hatches. What also happens when you come up to retirement is your daytime usage starts increasing. Traditionally, you're out of the home from nine till five. You might have used three and a half thousand kilowatt hours a year. But with you being around a little bit more, that energy is set to increase. Moreover, the cost of energy over the period of your retirement on the basis that your income is now fixed, your bills will slowly but surely creep up. Solar panels and maybe battery storage, if it's right, can help lower those bills so they become more sustainable for the long term. And don't forget the tax implications of this as well. I'll often get retirement couples that will wait till the next financial year before drawing anything out of their pension pot. Remember that solar panels and battery storage is not only VAT free until April 2027 to purchase, but also when you generate your own energy, that's tax free as well. If I've got to spend £1,000 on electric for the year and I'm an additional rate taxpayer, I've got my 40% tax band, 12% national insurance contributions, you have to earn, fag packet maths, about £1,500 to pay that £1,000 bill. What that means is when you generate your own electricity, that income goes much further. So this can often mean people that are in a basic tax brand 20% plus your national insurance contributions don't need to go into the additional rate tax band. So money goes a little bit further for longer. The other benefit, I suppose, is a predictable bill. Just knowing what things are going to cost, knowing that you're generating on your roof, solar panels themselves often have a 25 year product, 30 year power warranty. So you kind of know this is gonna stand the test of time. Now it's important at this stage that you look at the right manufacturer for you and that that's gonna be done with longevity in mind. You also want to make sure it's got low maintenance and ultimately it's gonna give you peace of mind. So what I typically see in this scenario is a usage normally about three and a half thousand kilowatt hours a year to four and a half thousand kilowatt hours a year. Typically speaking, we'd expect nine to 12 grand. That would of course include uh, battery storage, solar panels, a hybrid inverter. Could be set up with or without house backup. There are a few things that be contingent upon. And ultimately it also depends on the size and footprint of your home. Larger footprint often have more electronic items and will therefore have higher consumption. But that just gives you a bit of a ballpark figure. That brings me nicely on to my second scenario, rural homes with oil or LPG heating. Oil prices and gas prices when they're done by the bottle are absolutely going through the roof, particularly since post lockdown. This is making heating these houses that are more rural far more expensive. Rural homes also can sometimes get blackouts. This is where the power just goes out of the home and there's not much you can do about it until now with battery storage technology. So if you're using oil or LPG and it is going a little bit higher, ultimately what you can't do is make a direct connection to an oil field, but what you can do is generate your own electricity. Now you might be thinking, well, if I reduce my reliance upon oil or gas, that's just gonna increase the amount of consumption I'm using on my electricity side. But that's something we can actually do something with. So obviously throughout the summer months we can generate renewable energy, can divert excess generation from your solar system through to your hot water tank to heat your hot water system. Now you might be thinking, well, that's great, but what about my winter? Well, this is where battery storage kicks in. Not only can we still use that to divert any excess energy out to your hot water tank, but what we can also do is use cheap nighttime electric in order to be able to charge up batteries, heat that same immersion element using off-peak rates. So your hot water tank can heat for cheap. You can then run any of your electric system with battery storage. It works particularly well alongside heat pumps as well, but sometimes people in rural buildings often don't go for a heat pump because they've got a full stone built walls. They might be in a listed building and there's complexities that go with it as well. Solar panels and battery storage aren't contingent upon working with a heat pump. It is the fact that we can reduce the amount of oil consumption, increase the electricity consumption to overall reduce your reliance upon oil and your reliance from the national grid. Typical systems in this scenario would couple with something like a power wall three or a sig energy side install with house backup with rural properties being much more prone to power cuts 
You often need greater amounts of storage. Ultimately, electric heating requires quite a lot of electricity draw, so it's really important the fact that we have the right amount of storage to be able to meet the home demand. But when you're not really left with much of a choice and you can't make a connection to the gas system where you simply don't want to, this is an opportunity to be able to lower those bills globally between the two by ultimately being quite tactical with it. You can also export any energy out to the national grid, often tax-free, build up a credit on your account and that credit can then be used in the winter months to offset against the debit payments. Ultimately, if you're thinking of living there for quite some time, it can often make complete sense and great return on investment. From a kit perspective and from a price perspective, it's quite hard for me to say, but a Powerwall 3 by Tesla Energy, for example, with house backup, is typically speaking in between seven and a half and about 7,700 pounds, depending on final spec and setup. And then ultimately, depending on your consumption, would depend on the number of solar panels. Now, what I've found in rural properties is they often have larger roof spaces, things like barns, outbuildings, where we can install and increase the amount of solar panels. Solar panels on metal sheet roofs in particular are actually quite cheap to install upon, often less than a tiled roof because there's less work that ultimately goes into it. But a typical budget for a rural property would be somewhere between say about 12 and maybe about 15,000. You could technically spend less and you could, in some scenarios, we often spend more, particularly if it's quite a large footprint of building or where we've got lots and lots of heating requirement that comes with it, but there's a bit of a ballpark. I've actually done a full deep dive going through an actual real world scenario of a rural home where they had oil. That gives you a bit of an idea. So in number three is a family of four. I'll speak for experience, I've got two kids. Uh, and what you find with this is kids generate a bucket load of washing. Our washing machine and dryer is often on two to three times a day. Irons running, hair dryers, consoles, Xboxes, and it can just get a little bit crazy with the number of electronic devices they've got in their home. Now, all of these things contribute towards a higher and higher electricity bill. Until your kids are getting kind of into their mid-twenties, they're probably not going to be leaving home. So this could leave you saddled with the bill for that little bit longer. Now, in this scenario, I appreciate that budgets can often be tight. You're thinking, I've got nursery fees to pay for, school uniforms to contribute towards, but this is truly a bill that you can genuinely do something about. So in that scenario, I would probably be recommending, like I've gone for 10 solar panels in my home, a 9.5 kilowatt hour battery i've got five kilowatt hybrid inverter actually my system's a bit of a middle of the range kit ultimately i had the pick of just about everything but at the same stage of the game when you are renovating a home when you are having to do work when you've just moved home because of primary schools for example you're in that position whereby actually you've just got to cut the cloth accordingly but this is one way when you make that investment, ultimately it's going to be cheaper for the next 25, 30 years. So during the summer months, I mean, solar generates, goes into my battery. So from about April through to about October time, I'm pretty grid independent. I can just run off the back of my solar panels day-to-day -day basis there's the odd exception during the winter i have to blend in uh, battery storage so effectively i get cheap night rate with the ev charge it up at night and use the power in my battery to be able to supply the electricity required for my own home what this means is virtually no bill most of the time a credit during the summer and then in the winter i have a much lower electricity bill what I've also done is like insulated walls underneath my floor and in the attic space to try and bring my gas bill down as well. This is one of those bills that effectively, once you've made the investment, yes, there's an additional capital outlay, you're in a position whereby you get more money to spend at the end of each month. Your cash flow improves. Budget for a typical household of four, great question. I'd probably be spending somewhere in between about nine and anything up to about 14 grand, depending on truly how much consumption you're having. Personal experience, load the roof up with solar panels. Focus slightly less on battery storage. And uh, what I find is I do a night rate, charge overnight, and that supplies my morning, my cooking, making sure the milk's ready for my kids. Um, and then during the day, I'm out at work, solar tops battery up. Battery then runs my tea time, and this end the cycle then continues. During the summer holidays, what you find is when we're off for long periods of time, what we're doing, generating lots of renewable energy on the roof. If you are out during the day and you generate too much, I build a credit up on my bill during the summer months, the offsets against my winter bills. So roughly speaking, that's where I would say you would be at. If you're really on a tight budget, go for solar only. I did a brilliant video where I said what you could spend for £5,000. It's a great uh, video to take a look at, but I would focus predominantly on the number of solar panels I go for, because ultimately we can come back to battery storage really easily at a later date.
Number four, work from home professionals. Like our cameraman, Paul. Hello. He works from home. When you work from home, often, if I compare to a standard family of four, like I was talking about previously, this can mean often extra electricity consumption. People might claim a working from home allowance, but often that doesn't quite factor into all of the additional costs that you might want to pay. Your commute is to the kitchen after all. So in this scenario, daytime generation is immediately useful. Personally, I'd spec a slightly smaller piece of battery storage and spend that money instead up on the roof on some extra solar panels. If you think about it, your working day is nine till five when the solar generation is at its peak. This is also when you might use things like electric heating, for example, for that little boost during the day. So what you'll often find is again, charge your battery up at night, that can run you for the morning aspect of everything. Solar tops that battery up during the day, the little battery you've got will then do the tea time usage and you're back onto the same cycle again. Depending on your actual rate, sometimes it makes more sense to export any excess energy out to the grid, but other times it can make sense to divert that energy to your car. Now, if you work from home all day, you could effectively rerun your car on solar generation throughout the spring, summer and autumn months. Now that leads me quite nicely onto price. I would be leaning very heavily in this scenario towards additional solar panels. If you have a choice, under spec the battery storage size, over spec the number of panels you're gonna use. Your battery's just there to smooth out the supply. You're around to catch it as it's being generated. You're also in a position of where you're a bit like, Battery's full, better get that load of washing on. So in that scenario, again, I'd probably be recommending depending on the size of home and depending on the industry that you're in. But I know in Paul's scenario, he went for 10 solar panels, a five kilowatt inverter, and a 5.12 kilowatt hour battery. And from speaking with Paul, he has nearly a thousand pounds worth of credit on his Octopus account because he's using his energy whilst it's being generated. And that leads me quite nicely onto point number five, which is medical and critical care devices. Not often the topic of conversation you think when you associate it with solar panels and battery storage. And what I mean by this is those people that heavily rely upon the power being there and available at all times and in all scenarios. Often this is about thinking time in the event of an emergency. So we've had a couple of scenarios where people have been on breathing apparatus, CPAP machines. I've had them where they've had electronic beds, for example, Stana stair lifts. And actually a lot of the time this is more about peace of mind rather than just about savings. Sometimes it's just simply the case that when the power goes out from the national grid, that you have the confidence that your power in your home continues to work. One scenario uh, we found ourselves in when we did a design was a critical piece of care equipment came with 20 minutes back up. 20 minutes when you really need this breathing equipment seems like a very short period of time if you need emergency care services to be attending your home. Having a house battery system in that scenario is not just about savings, it's really just about making sure that if the power goes out, you've got some thinking time within which to act to get emergency services to your home in order to be able to help. Critical devices also comes into this as well. So we often get people with smart home systems, CCTV, electronic gates, security systems, where effectively, if a burglar came along, cut the power to the house, or ultimately you just had a power outage, from a security perspective, cameras might go off, alarm goes off, it might have a siren that goes outside. But if you're really reliant upon this stuff for your own personal security or just your peace of mind, then that's a scenario where, it, again, it's not just all about savings. With this as a type of system, what we'd often do is, some people just go, you know, I quite like the idea of having some solar panels as well. But often what we'll do is just put battery storage in with a percentage set in reserve so that if the national grid power goes out, you can supply your home locally from your battery storage at least for a few hours. If you get larger battery storage, often for a few days even if that was needed. Prices for this can be a little bit subjective. So we can go anywhere from, say like a Powerwall 3 with house backup, seven and a half grand. If you were on a bit of a budget, you might be able to get house backup for as little as about six-ish often you need a slightly larger inverter. If you're on three phase, cost can be a little bit higher and then you would couple it with solar panels as much as you would need. And that wraps up the first five. The next five I'm gonna be going through is EV car charger users, high energy consumption households, self builds, home renovations and houses, with valuable fish like carp, which comes up more regularly than you would imagine. But 
you're going to have to join me for part two. So like and subscribe to the channel where you can find the next five. Thank you.